Thank you all for uh, attending this session. Um, I am Amara Ban. I'm with uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And uh, we are working on um, research on network management and uh, digital twin for uh, autonomous networks. So today I will um, present uh, in, in this session how we use uh, Neo4j, Neo Knowledge Graph, to uh, design a smart network repository to improve uh, network management and simplify uh, some aspects of uh, management system development. So um, in the life cycle of uh, a network, like a data center network or an enterprise network, operators usually uh, need some features and uh, some tools that are provided uh, usually separately. So they need, um, first of all, some persistence of the network state and configuration uh, with uh, an access uh, according to different levels of, of abstractions, uh, depending on the, the purpose of the management. This can be um, physical uh, topology and assets for planification or uh, other configuration and logical connectivity for traffic engineering or, uh, or for uh, troubleshooting. Um, there is also, um, during the design phase uh, of the life cycle, uh, Control plane verification can be used, which, which is uh, uh, used to simulate uh, the, the control plane, the, like the routing uh, protocols, such as BGP, uh, to make sure that uh, the policies intended uh, in the network are, are respected. So the operator can, can verify these, uh, these policies or specifications. Uh, same idea for forwarding analysis. Which is uh, which tries to provide um, an exhaustive verification of the network forwarding behavior, uh, considering every possible traffic that can reach the network, which means every possible header, packet header, and since the uh, the the the, 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 the header space is very large, uh, the main approach in forwarding analysis is to divide this uh, this. Uh, state space into uh, a reasonable number of uh, what, what we call equivalence classes. And an equivalence class represents um, a set of packet headers that are treated the same way in the network. So we can process that equivalence class in the model of the, the network forwarding instead of the, the large number of, of headers. And then we can, uh, again, verify uh, reachability or detect loops or these kind of things. And there is another um, feature that may be appreciated, but less used than the, the three pure previous ones, which is uh, an extraction of network intent. It can be used for documentation, for example, to generate documentation or description of the network to know some characteristics of the network for uh, monitoring, to drive monitoring, or to uh, to know about what the network intends to be, especially when it's uh, maintained uh, like um, over over the time. So uh, the first thing we see here in terms of data is that um, these, these tools are related together or these features are related together in terms of the, the data they, they consume from, from each, each other. So uh, control plane verification tools usually need to, to have the data from like network configuration transferred to, to, the, to the tool. And, uh, and forwarding analysis also uh, consumes data from the network state, especially routes, um, or, or it can be also from the, uh, the control plane uh, verification, which provides uh, the possible forwarding plan that can emerge from the configuration based on simulations. And also network intent extraction tools uh, also consume um, usually network configuration files from of the of the routers to to do some unsupervised uh, uh, computations and extract these uh, descriptions. So, uh, if we consider the um, some of the main approaches and most popular approaches developed in uh, in uh, in this context, and we compare them with respect to the uh, to the four features uh, I just introduced, we can see that. 
each tool uh, is uh, only focused on one aspect of these uh, these features, or maybe control plane and data plane sometimes are related, but they are designed as separate uh, as separate tools. But the interesting thing is uh, is that they consume the same data from the network, which is the the regular data we can get from the network state. So here we, we exclude the telemetry and the time series data for performance. It's mostly uh, data that's used also for proactive verification before deployment. And they also use graphs naturally as many protocols and many tools and models to represent this data and, uh, and model their, their, uh, their functioning. And also in terms of development, some of them are based on uh, SQL or NoSQL databases when storage is needed or um, reasoning tools like uh, logic uh, solvers like Prolog or Datalog to uh, to model the behavior of protocols and obviously other libraries like data science libraries and then usually they provide uh, the, the, in terms of extensibility they provide limited uh, possibilities in, term, in terms of queries they are mainly extensible by uh, by going into the the code the code itself of the tool or updating the model or through approaches like that and they have limited support for of uh, of uh, like an open language for queries and um, a language that can be uh, that, that can be known by developers or is easy to to use for to extend these tools so our our um, one of our um, concerns here or objectives is to try to design a smart repository for network uh, management, which can contain the provide the, 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 the these four features by centralizing the necessary data from the network um, in in sort in, in in a form of a graph or knowledge graph, and then. Uh, provide a query, uh, a unified query language for accessing these different uh, features with one with one tool. And here we we, we explore native graph databases for uh, designing this tool. And we 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 work with Neo4j. So the uh, the approach is uh, is um, to uh, consider to use Neo4j and um, define knowledge graph. And then use the different libraries existing with Neo4j and custom library also, uh, which we develop for network functions and uh, cipher, also cipher capabilities in terms of um, stored procedures to encapsulate these uh, main functions, which is the network state repository, um, implement some control plane behavior of uh, some protocols. Uh, implement the forwarding behavior and uh, also graph transformations, uh, which, which makes it possible to change the representation of the network data without having to recompute these uh, these models uh, for a forwarding and, and control plane. And then since these are embedded in, in Neo4j, we can provide them through a unified uh, interface, which is Cypher query. So we can query uh, as needed by the operator, we can query uh, uh, and either directly or through applications uh, into the, uh, the the data. So um, quickly to show the uh, how the data is organized, the network state is organized um, with an intuitive representation which follows the uh, endpoint, physical and logical endpoint and connections, and then uh, the the stacked model of uh, of network. Uh, protocols here it's uh, we consider ipv4 uh, obviously for uh, for uh, to have a general network to work with so there these are general network concepts uh, and then we also have um, routes and uh, ACL rules and mapping between virtual and physical ports so this provides the basic uh, concepts of networks and then we can extend this uh, representation with the control plane behavior by including, in this case, BGP updates and filters and the routes and the relationships be between them in terms of uh, uh, filters that are applied to updates and uh, how the, the routes are, are learned. So for the forwarding analysis, we, um, we adapted the, um, the AP verifier, which has a fast 
equivalence class computation and minimum number of uh, equivalence classes. And then once they are computed, we, we insert them into the, uh, the, the, the graph, uh, which binds the, uh, every port with the, the, basically the traffic that can be forwarded to that port and uh, also the traffic that is filtered uh, inbound and outbound. And then we compute the reachability trees for every port, which represent all the possible uh, alternative next hops uh, for every traffic on every uh, active port in the network. So it's an exhaustive representation. And then we can explore these through uh, Cypher queries. So I have, I have a quick demo, which I, I accelerated, so uh, maybe it's not easy to follow, but I will try to comment. This is uh, simply the exploration of the network state. So we have here a network of um, 10 or, or 12 uh, routers with the um, usual uh, IP connectivity. We have a MAC layer, IP layer, and uh, routes, and BGP peers, and we represent we represent them according to the to the model I just introduced. Then we implemented some basic functionalities. This is trace route, the virtual trace route that's executed directly in the network repository. So we can check reachability without having to change a tool or uh, execute a virtual thing. And we get we get uh, hop by hop uh, detailed actions applied to the packet until it uh, reaches the destination. Yeah, so um, this is the BGP uh, route propagation. It's a simplified version. Here we show uh, a denied route, so a route that's, uh, that is blocked by the, uh, the filter, and we can see exactly the filter that, that, has, been, uh, that has blocked the, the route. This is the same uh, BGP propagation for a route that's allowed, so it will be propagated. So uh, these are implemented through Cypher. Uh, procedures. So we see the routes here are uh, installed in the, the um, neighbor routers with the usual BGP information. And we can even see the, the whole path from the, the origin uh, announcement to the uh, route installed in the, in the network. We get every detail of the, the process of BGP. Uh, and again, this is the uh, the same repository that has the network state in in real time, so we can directly check these. This is for the um, the network data plane. What you see here are the uh, VLANs and the uh, physical ports and the equivalence classes and the mapping between between them in terms of forwarding and uh, fi filters, basically uh, access control list. Then we compute reachability trees with different parameters, uh, depending on the level of details we want for the forwarding behavior. Then we can, once these are computed, these are computed once, and then we can basically play with, with this to change representations or to look for uh, information. Uh, so these are the reachability trees. You can see each node here represents a possible next hop uh, with the, the associated packet headers that will be forwarded to that to that uh, next hop, and then we can have um, some basic uh, verifications. This is just the topology of the of the network. It's a leaf spine from a Stanford dataset, by the way, and um, we can get routing loops that are that were computed during reachability trees computation. And we get also that we see in the ECs the the traffic that leads to the uh, to the routing loop. Uh, waypoint is basically to verify that certain traffic uh, goes through um, waypoint uh, devices like firewalls, so we can check them and uh, find if there is there are like headers that escape from this uh, constraint, so we can. We can fix it. Then we have here some uh, graph-based analysis, which is uh, you, which uses a graph database, uh, graph data science library. Uh, we get, for example, just two examples: uh, important ports, which is useful in uh, 
to to drive the uh, the monitoring and um, and also similar routers which is also useful in in terms of uh, maintenance and uh, maintenance planification these these kind of things yeah so i'm gonna stop here so um yeah um i would just uh i'm just think i'm um, at the time so uh yeah the, the full demonstration and uh, the project are available on github and uh, yeah contributions and questions are welcome thank you <laughs>